Hi everyone, welcome to another NetNAR studio visit, and this time coming to you direct from the wonderful studio of the wonderful Howard Rheingold. Um, so many of you might know who he is. For those of you who are um, curious, well, he's a very well-known writer. Um, he writes about digital culture, and of course he's the coiner of the term virtual communities, and he's here with us today to talk about combinatorial poetics, which is um, a topic that leads us right into the question of what is electronic literature and thinking about writing in a digital age. So um, without further ado, I'm going to spin around and start talking to Howard. Combinatorial poetics was originated by William Burroughs, who was talking about his experiments with cut-ups, where he cut up books and rearranged the pieces. About uh, 1985, I participated in an early online community called The Well. And uh, like a forum, people would type messages and there would be threads and uh, someone started a thread about an oracle he had created by cutting up a, a dictionary, took a paper dictionary, and cut it up into fortune cookie sized strips and he put them in a big leather bag and people would log on to the well and they would ask a question of the oracle, you know, something in your life. And uh, Ramon, the person who had created this, would then go stick his hand in the leather bag and pull out a, a strip of paper and it would have words from the dictionary on both sides and that constituted the message and they were eerily uh, uh, appropriate sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked the oracle what its name was and, uh, and its name was Shady. And, uh, and people used this for years actually. And so. Um, more recently, oh, about eight or nine years ago, some friends and I decided we wanted to make a project. We wanted to make something like a wunderkammer, a, 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 a box full of wonders. And we also wanted it to have some kind of oracular element. And I remembered Shady. And so we were thinking of making something like a slot machine with revolving discs so that there would be words uh, like a, three words, uh, a verb, an adjective, and a noun that would constitute a message. Ultimately, we decided to do it electronically rather than like mechanically like a slot machine. Um, and we created the pataphysical slot machine, which was a, a combination of a, a wonder box and a combinatorial poetical oracle. So you would seat yourself in, in front of the pataphysical slot machine, formulate your question, and then you would press a button, and then there would be a gong would go off, and a voice would read from a, a collection of, of, of words that we gave it about, um, I think, three or four hundred different words of three or four hundred verbs, adjectives, and nouns, which, which gives you millions of possible combinations. It would randomly select one of each and then um, say it to you and then there would be a an LED ticker that would read it to you and then there was a little printer that would print out a little fortune cookie that you could take with you. And so uh, we, had, we built the, the pataphysical slot machine. Uh, more recently I, I uh, talked a friend of mine into programming a bot for Twitter called uh, Oracle of Random. And so if you tweet to Oracle of Random, one word, uh, your question, uh, the Oracle of Random will select, uh, it has three texts. It has the dictionary, it has the book of Revelation from the Bible, and it has Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people, and we'll select random verb, adjective, noun from that and tweet it back to you. 
So the so the Oracle of Random is at Oracle of Random. It's at Oracle of Random. Okay, so that'll be interesting for the NetNAR community to start checking out and communicating with. Um, this sounds like a really interesting um, kind of reinterpretation of a curiosities of one and wonder cabinets, sort of with an interactive quality to it. Um, back in the day, I think it was about collecting and then sort of um, observing. But what is exciting, I think, about this this uh, reinvention that you're describing in the pataphysical slot machine is the fact that there's interactivity involved. Um, so, well, I, I, I'm interested in the uh, kind of the collective unconscious speaking mm -hmm. to you. There's another uh, really easy thing to do, which is to get yourself a kitchen timer, and when there are a group of people having a party or dinner or just hanging out. Um, you know, when people are having conversations, uh, set the timer for a random interval of, you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes and and just set it aside. And then when the timer goes off, whatever the last thing that was said before the timer goes off, write that down and then set the timer again. Mm. And it's weird. A group of people can create this kind of message over over the evening Couple, you know, several hours go by and, and you've been recording these little bits and pieces, They sometimes they add up. Mm. Um, that idea of combinatorial, I've heard the term combinatorial creativity, which is, um, if I'm not mistaken, a kind of collection of um, inspiration that sort of yields in derivation yields a new vision of some sort you sort of pick and choose from all the different um, influences that come at you stimulation um, reading uh, visions etc like what you're looking at during the day sort of reconfigure to become the creative output that you um, share with the world so um, the Con the idea of combinatorial poetics is particularly interesting because it isn't just sort of a remix of creativity that you are filtering through the world, right? It, it has specifically to do with language too, right? Um, this idea of poetics, I think, is um, key to, to, to what you're thinking about with these projects, right? Well, and again, back to Burroughs, the idea that um, you can create things by randomly remixing things that have already been created and sometimes mm -hmm. weirdly messages will pop out at you mm -hmm. from this randomness. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that there's any particular work in the interpretive act of receiving the 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 what is spit back at you? Um, well, I think... In some circumstances, it's specific to the group of people that, who may have a yeah. set of references that resonate with them if they, if if those references come up in the messages. Yeah, so it's uh, the, in a way those who are receiving the messages are also authors because their set of interpretive references become an important part of what meaning we might take from the the randomness involved, right? Well, I think this is related to, to um, some of Jung's ideas about synchronicity. Mm. That there's a kind of psychic field in any group of people and that you're manifesting mm. something from that field. It's not entirely random. But it's something going on that's affecting the, the computer or the or the strips of paper in the mm -hmm. in the bag. Yeah, that's that's really fascinating. It sort of puts it it at the level of a kind of shared psychology and also um, uh, patterns involved with exchange in some way uh, versus versus just the machine doing work and then. Um